Hello friends, welcome to our Checkmate Architecture channel. In our current lesson, we will talk about the movements of the pieces and the approximate values of the pieces. First of all, let's start with the king. The Shah is the king of the country. Unlike other pieces, kings cannot be exchanged. Kings can only be checkmated. What is checkmate? We will work on this in the following lessons, but now it is the king. We will talk about the movement of the king forward or backward to the side, forward or diagonally, that is, it can move in any direction, there is a limit to it. It is also a knight. The opponent's king is to the side. The opponent's turn is white. The opponent's king is to the side or backward, diagonally forward, but friends. How many steps? One step. The kings can move in any direction, but only if the square next to it is safe. We can say it like this. The king can move to the neighboring squares until it is a safe square. What does a safe square mean? Friends. We will talk about this when we talk about saving the king in our future lessons. Now the rooks are vertical. Or if our stone moves horizontally, it can go all the way. Likewise, it can go horizontally, but why can't it go? Because there is an obstacle in its path. If there is an obstacle, over the obstacle. If there is no obstacle in its path, the castle can go horizontally. We said that it moves vertically or horizontally. The rook could move vertically or horizontally if it wanted to. Can the rook move horizontally by moving vertically? Yes, the rook can move horizontally. It can move vertically or horizontally and capture the opponent's pieces. However, I would like to point out that only the white stone will not move as it does here. Since we are practicing right now, we are practicing the movement of the rook. Normally, if a white player plays, also a white piece moves. Black plays, but since we are studying the rook, we move the rook vertical, horizontal, vertical. I want to point out that the rook moves vertically or horizontally, but there should be no obstacle in its path. For example, if there is a pawn there, it cannot jump on this pawn and eat the knight, friends, because the rook cannot reach the knight here. His own stone is an obstacle. He cannot jump over his own stone. After the castle, let's talk about the bishop. Friends, in the game we have two bishops, one of which starts with a black color. Our stone that moves diagonally to the game is the bishop. Since it starts with white color, it will reach white squares throughout. It has to move from the same color with our other bishop because it starts in black. It can move like this. Just like in the castle, if the path is empty, it can go to the end. We removed one of the individuals. We placed an elephant here. Yes, the knight is here. We put a knight here. Yes, let it be a rook. Let it be a castle here. The bishop was going diagonally. Look, it has both a yellow and a red path. Yellow. There is no stone to take on the road, but there is on the red road. When we look here, let's evaluate the green and red road. There is no stone to take on the red road, but the horse can wear it from here. By the way, I want to say this about the bishops. We said we would talk about the approximate values of the stones related to the elephant and the horse. Bishops friends, three points. When the knight plays this, we can think that whites have won three points. Now we have won the castle. How many points is the rook? We can say that the castle is about five points. If you remember, 
We said this while talking about the castle. If there is an obstacle in its way, the bishop cannot jump over it. If the way was clear, he could have won this castle and won five points, but he could have won five points. Since the stone is an obstacle, friends, the bishop cannot jump over the horse here and eat this rook. Now, if we repeat what we are working on, we started with the movement of the king. The king was only moving one step and could move in all directions. We talked about rooks. Rooks move vertically or horizontally and cannot jump over their own piece. We said that if there is no obstacle on his way, he can go to the end of the road if he wants. Then we talked about elephants. Yes, we determined the castles in this way. One of the bishops starts in the dark square and the other in the light square. We said that he continues the game in those squares throughout his life. Thank you for watching my video. Friends, let's not forget to like and subscribe. See my next video.